Let's do this by, by cases first, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, just like before, whenever you see the absolute value of anything, it means two things at the same time, depending on what your values of x are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to name them. I'm going to say, there's a case where x is negative, and therefore that absolute value will be this. And then there's a case where, well, not x, the whole thing in here is positive, and that's a different thing. So case one is where x plus one on x is, we'll do the positive case first, okay? So if this is true, which by the way, I, I don't know when that is true, I'll find out in a minute, but it's whatever is inside the brackets, whenever that is true, the absolute value of that is just that. I don't need to apply any minus signs to it. So let me write that out x plus 1 on x is less than 2x. And I have to try and solve this thing, okay? Now, there's another case, case 2, which is where x plus 1 on x is not greater than 0. It's where it's negative, okay? And in that case, the absolute value of blah, 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 blah is not just that. I have to apply minus signs to the whole thing, okay? So it's going to look like this. How are you traveling so far? All I've done is I've broken it apart according to its, its positive negativeness. Uh, I do also want to point out, just like the very first question we did this morning, um, do you notice I don't have greater than or equal to here, and I don't have less than or equal to here. Can you tell me why? Because you don't know yet. Say it again. You don't, like, because there's an x and you don't know yet. Yeah, so see, see that it's there, right? That one there? It means I'm divided by x, so x can't ever be zero, okay? So therefore, cool, I'm done. Now, here's the tricky thing. I, um, I don't actually know when this is the case. Uh, it's not as simple as this guy, um, this guy over here, which is like, I know exactly when that's greater than zero. It's when x is positive or x is negative. Um, here, because there are these two things that are interacting with each other, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, so I'm going to have to think carefully about that in a second. Before I start to like, work with this question, I need to look at a simpler version. Okay? So if I said to you, Hmm. If I said to you something simple, like this, okay. let's go ahead and we can actually just solve this really simply. Uh, what can I do to get to my solution? What would be a first step that would simplify this a little bit? Add five to both sides. Yeah, I'll add five to both sides. That gives me that. And then I'm going to divide by two, which gives me this. Are you happy with that? And then I can draw that if I need to or all that kind of thing. Now what I want to point out is, this, I'm just going to um, I'm just going to draw it. If that's zero, that's two and a half, this hollow circle, and I'm going all the way that way. Okay. This inequality represents um, a whole bunch of values over here, an infinite set of values. However, it has like a starting point. It starts here and then it goes and goes and goes. That starting point, like where does it start? point can be found by solving the equation that matches this equality okay so if I solve this inequality I should say so if I solve this solving this is not the same as solving this but it tells me where this is going to start because I do exactly the same thing dot 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 dot, dot and I end up with x equals two and a half right so if I solve the equation then I'll be able to find where it starts, and then I just work out, am I on the left or am I on the right, okay? Um, if, for example, the question was not this, if the question had the inequality facing the other way, less than, less than, do you notice the equation can't tell which way you're facing, right? The equation only tells you where do you start, it tells you that point, and then you kind of have to work out, well, do you go that way or do you go that way? And you look back at the inequality to tell you. I'm going to take advantage of the same trick over here. I want to work out what the starting point is. And the reason why I go in that direction is, how do I solve this thing? What do I do with it, okay? This one on x is a bit problematic. I don't encounter equations like this that mix an x and a, a dividing by x at the same time. What I do have a lot of experience with is quadratic functions. But to turn this into a quadratic, I have to multiply through. If I multiply through by x, Right. Uh, what does that turn the left-hand side into? x squared plus, plus 1. If I multiply the right-hand side by x, I get 2x squared. Do you agree? 
But now I'm in a bit of a dilemma because when you're dealing with inequalities... You don't know if x is positive or negative. Correct. When you multiply by a number, the inequality's direction can change depending on what the number is. So if x is negative, the inequality will change. And if x is positive, the inequality will not change. But I don't know what it is, right? Yeah. Does that mean you would... Because if you uh, times it by minus 1... Mm -hmm. If I multiply by negative 1, I would know what's happening. But, oh, but, but the problem is, like, x can be negative 1 or it could be other stuff too, and I don't know, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm a bit stuck, okay? So therefore, I'm like, mm, mm, I don't know, okay? So let's find a starting point, and then we'll look left and right, okay? Now, um, let me show you how I'm going to do this. So if I say I'm going to solve this now, so what I'm going to do is I want to find, like, oh, where do you begin? And then I'll, I'll look in each direction. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. x squared plus 1 equals 2x squared. I can multiply through by x. That's fine because I don't have to worry about a direction here. Okay, can you help me solve this then? Um, negative x squared plus 1. Yeah, so if I subtract 2x squared from both sides, um, that'll be negative x squared plus 1 equals 0. Yeah. And of course, that's a bit of a weird way to write that, so we'll just fix that up. So that looks like this. Is that okay? Is it opposite intercepts? Um, yes. So what this means is, see this thing? It's true somewhere. Where is it true? Well, the places where it's going to start from are plus and minus one. Okay. So on one side of one and on the other side of one, on one side of negative one, one side, uh, the other side of negative one. I'm going to find out where it's true or not. Okay. Now I'm just going to stop for a second. This is really hard, what we're doing. This is quite confusing. I actually don't even know the answer at this point because I can't visualize what is happening. Like, when is this true? Uh, I don't really know, okay? In fact, over here, you know how I said case one, case two? If I followed this direction, like multiply it through by x and deal with the inequality, just watch. I would have to do more cases. I would have to say, there's another case, there's case, this is case one. So I'm gonna call this case one A. If x is greater than zero, right? And I multiply through by x, what happens to the inequality sign? Does it change or does it stay? It stays. It stays. So this will become x squared plus one is the same as two x squared. Um, so I can solve this now. This is going to become like we saw before, uh, 1 minus x squared is less than 0, and then I'm going to have to solve that. But that might not be the case. There's another case. There's case 1b, where x is less than 0, and the inequality changes direction, right? So it's going to look like this. Um, phew. Um, x squared plus 1 is greater than 2x squared. You see it change direction there. And so I'm going to subtract this, and then I'm going to have to solve that. Now, I'm confused. <laughs> um, I have so many inequalities flying around, and like, what is x? What can it be? What can it not be? And I don't actually know. And this is the classic reason why cases will work. I promise you, if I do this all correctly, I will get the right answers at the bottom. So there's no flaw in the method. It's just confusing, right? I don't know, I still don't know what direction I'm headed in. Usually, because I've been teaching this for ages. By the time I get about half or two thirds of the way through the question, I can start to see, oh, that's what the answer will be. I have no idea what I'm doing Does right that now. mean you have to okay. do, if you're doing case two, does that mean you'll be like two A and two B? Yeah, yeah. So there are four cases, okay? okay. Because the, the, the four cases come from two parts. The first case comes from, hey, you've got an absolute value here, right? And then it, the number of cases doubles because it's an inequality and you have to be like, well, is it gonna go that way or that way? So this is why it's so confusing, okay? So I'm gonna hit pause on that, and I'm gonna show you how I would do it visually, okay? So I'm gonna draw this, and I want you to um, try and keep track with me and draw it along with me. Wait, so when you say pause on that, you mean yep. like, the, like everything there, just, just don't look at it? Uh, the starting point. Yeah, that's right. Okay. I'm gonna restart, because you know what? I'm not even halfway on my solution to this question, yeah. because I haven't even started on this guy, and then I'm gonna, and this guy's not finished yet, so yeah, I, like I said, Cases can work in very simple examples, uh, which is why people often start with that. But the simple examples kind of get left behind, and then they're like, hey, good luck. <laughs> <laughs>